I think the panel is pretty good. It's a flexible panel, but obviously it can only flex so much. It doesn't look cracked or anything. The cables got ripped when it flew off, but you can always add extensions onto those. Should be a good review video. What's going on everyone? Honda Fit for Adventure here. And last year, I installed a 200 watt flexible solar panel to the roof of my Honda Fit. And since then, I've gotten quite a few questions on how well the panel's been holding up. Oh man, the solar panel ripped off the car. The panel looks okay. How well it's been performing. It's a Honda Fit, by the way. It might be the coolest fit on this continent. He's like, yeah, I got a power cell in here. Oh, the solar panel's on top. And what exactly it is that I'm solar yeah. at? Is there two in here? One? So today, I'm going to answer those questions. What are you soldering? No, my car isn't electric. It's not even a hybrid. But I do like to drive around the US and camp in the back of the car, so I use the solar panel to charge up a secondary battery and power all of my devices. Some of these devices include a 12-volt cooler, 12-volt fan, a heated blanket, phones, cameras, and my dash cam. I love that solar panel. I have one on my Jeep Wrangler. What size panels do you have? It's a 180. My previous setup was a 240 watt rigid solar array that was attached to a roof rack and cargo basket that charged up a 100 amp hour battery. That setup allowed me to run all of my gear 24 seven all year round. I wanted to give the car a stealthier appearance and to improve its fuel economy. So I decided to try out a flexible solar panel. How's it been holding up? Well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The bad news is that I've had some attachment issues with keeping the panel secured to the car and I ended up damaging the panel, so I can't give you a fair oh, one-year so review. So close to home. And see how it sucks out from underneath this? Like that is so weird. The good news is, is that the panel still works, just not 100%, but it worked well enough to get me through the rest of the year. I do plan on replacing the panel now that I've figured out how to properly secure it, but that probably won't be until next year. So what happened? I first installed the flexible solar panel using double-sided 3M tape and some white vinyl. I also had to add some shims to help level out the rear of the panel to form to the shape of the curved roof. This configuration lasted several months, but eventually failed its first time out on the tollway, specifically when I hit 80 miles per hour. Oh man, the solar panel ripped off the car. Thankfully, the panel flew off into the side, landing on the grassy center median. Oh, is that it right there? Get out of here. Holy shit, it is. The panel looks okay. The cables were ripped out of the junction box, but I was able to solder them back on and restore the panel back to its working condition. All right, so we got the panel flat on the roof here, exposed to full sun. Our new soldered connections coming in through the roof. Don't mind the mess, obviously I'm working on the car here. The main thing is, look, we got 6.8 amps coming in. Once I soldered in the connections, we got a lot more power coming in. That's exactly what I thought. 6.9, we're almost going up to seven. The highest I've seen on here is 9.9. .9, so this works pretty good. Now I just have to caulk this in and put the top on and then reattach it back to my car. The second installation, I used double-sided 3M tape but instead of using vinyl to secure around the edges, I used a Turnabon roofing tape. This industrial tape is used to seal around rooftop AC units and even advertised to secure solar panels down to the roof of vans. Got the Turnabon rough cut. I'm going to apply this now and trim it up. I'm gonna do the back first, then the sides, and then the front on top. That way it overlaps heading toward the back. A turnabon is super adhesive and a bit difficult to work with, so I first put a layer of clear vinyl down before applying it to the roof. Sadly, this configuration didn't work either and failed again at 80 miles per hour. I noticed that just in time. I think it melted. It got too hot. Oh, I was so close to home. And see how it sucks out from underneath this? Like that is so weird. And this is all fresh tape. This time the solar panel stayed attached to the car, 
but ended up folding over on itself, causing some permanent damage to the panel. You can see we have a stress mark going all the way across the panel. Everything past the stress mark is no longer generating power. That's right, we lost about two thirds of our power generation. Our peak 9.9 .9 amp input is now down to 3.6 amps in peak sun and even less during the winter. Third time's a charm. My third and final installation seems to be holding up. The flexible solar panel came with six eyelets around the edges. I added some more eyelets around the edges of the panel and used those eyelets to secure the panel down to some industrial magnets that I laid around the edges of the roof. Once the panel was bolted down and positioned correctly, I then used the Eternabon tape to seal around the edges. This configuration seems to be holding up, it just doesn't look the cleanest. So here's how nice and flat the roll is, but once I start to unroll it, we do get some crinkles. And you can't easily work it out of this material. Once it's on the car, it's on the car. You can't easily pull this up and stretch it. At the end of the day, I just really want it to stay on. The final installation has lasted over 5,000 tollway miles. And as I mentioned earlier, I do plan on replacing the solar panel, but not until I figure out how to clean this install up a bit. Until next time, stay fit.